Join James Tambalebi for Ask the Expert. Hello, welcome to another edition of Ask the Expert with me, James Tambalebi. For this week's edition, we will look at the concept of road traffic safety. Road traffic safety refers to the methods and measures used to prevent road users from being killed or seriously injured. Typical road users include pedestrians, cyclists, motorists, vehicle passengers, and motorbike riders, among them Okada riders, as they are commonly known. But for an expert definition of the concept road traffic safety, I will talk to my expert, Mr. Lamin Koroma, a former consultant and trainer with the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority. Welcome to the program. Today we're looking at the topic road safety authority. Let's start with an understanding of the concept of road safety authority. The concept is actually for road safety authority is for the authority to be able to make sure all road users are safe, especially the vehicles, pedestrians, and bike riders. They have to make sure that they are trained and all before they acquire their license. Now there is a procedure which actually put in place you have to undergo certain training. The Road Safety Authority is actually mandated to make sure all vehicles and people, road users, are safe on the road. You spoke about procedures. Can you briefly throw light on those procedures? Yeah, the procedures now we have before you acquire a driving license, you have to come, you, you fill in the documentation, you pay the required fee. Because the driving licenses are of different categories. A is for you just to ride a bike. A, B is for you to ride a bike and drive a car, just like a minibus or a jeep. Then C, you can drive like the buses and the other. D and E is mainly machinery and art movers. That's the category. Then you have to come to do a test. You have a written test. After you pass the written test, you have to come with a vehicle to do the practical test. We have testers that have been trained, and these testers are really qualified to make sure you are trained for the category of vehicle you want to drive. If you tell us you've got A, B, C, D, as our people have got before, we have to make sure you prove to us that you can ride or operate a machine we we'll have to see that document from the company that employed you or we see tangible thing ourselves go there and see how you are doing beside that you are only limited to get a and b okay let's talk about the importance of road safety or road traffic safety underscore the importance for my listener the main important for road safety especially for our drivers they have to understand what to call the language of the road. The language of the road is mainly the road signs, and the road signs we have there will actually make sure, actually let you understand for safety, because everybody using that road has to be safe. You should know what the double yellow line means, you should know where to park, you should know when to trafficate, you should know how that vehicle is moving at a roundabout who's got priority at the roundabout whatever that's why you are going through all that okay there are concerns about road safety yeah um, as a veteran in the road transport sector can you explain those concerns the concerns we have now is is for most of the drivers and road users not complying by the regulations of what they're supposed to do. The compliance rate to have is good, but not good. That's why we have our traffic warning that actually makes sure you comply. One, before you acquire your driving license, things you have to do as a driver, you have to get a valid driving license. You have to comply with that. Two, the vehicle has to be roadworthy, it has to have a fitness certificate. Three, the way you dress, your dress code, you don't wear slippers. You have to wear a full shoe. 
therefore, you don't have to drink and drive. Any intoxication in your system is a problem. And five, you should always make sure you are not rude on that road. Polite and make sure you keep and abide by the road traffic rules we have. The language of the road is the road signs and road markings because they direct you what and what you are doing. That's why the compliance rate for that to happen, you have to make sure our wardings are actually doing that. The vehicle has to be licensed and insured. If the vehicle is not properly licensed and insured, it's a problem. Compliance again, some of them are using plates that are not supposed to use. You have commercial plates, which if you look at the, the back of that vehicle or the front, is red, especially for bike. But you have the private ones that are black, they don't comply. They use them to take pylons for business. And once you don't register as a commercial bike, you are not supposed to do that. That's a difficult compliance we have now. In fact, if you look, we have so many bikes in the compound that actually been arrested. They have to comply until you pay that charge. You are not supposed to park on any prohibited area. These are another compliant things. People say, oh, Nami places I go park with servant. And mainly to make sure we reduce road accident. Your lights, if you look at the front of the Puda Puda commercial vehicle, they have some artificial lights. Those lights dazzle onto the other driver approaching them. You will not be able to see. And when that happens, it causes accident. You should, when you park your vehicle, not to put grass on the road. You should always have reflective triangle. You should always have a jack. You should always have a spare tire, and it should be a serviceable spare tire. Your vehicle should be in that proper condition before your wipers, everything. Your windscreen should not be looking like a spider web. You see, the area where your the windscreen is working, we we'll call it the wiping envelope. That area should be clear. All those are things most of them do want to comply. Take like the, the water key vehicles. Take like most of these polar products. So these are the problem SLRS is facing, but they are really working hard to get rid of the people who are not complying. There's this other concern, let me add, that there are vehicles of certain personalities who are applying without number plates at all. Is that a legitimate concern? That is a big concern for us. The Road Traffic Act say any vehicle using that road should have a number plate. And that number plate is the identification plate, which is short, they call it the VIN number, vehicle identification number. That VIN should be there. But you have people, I won't say from authority, from there, from higher places, that always use that. And you have, even with people of the common type, still use vehicle without plates. Though sometimes we have ECOPS for printing plates, but that is being you know, of the past. You have to take like vehicle they just import in the country that has got what to call TVR, temporal registration like in, in document. That one is two weeks you are given that. But most of them, they will not come back to regularize the status of their vehicle. They will be running them without a plate. Most of them you are seeing, they've got TBR. And when it expires, you should come, then they give you a number. They have to come and do that. Those are the reasons you have. You have vehicles that are owned by most of the forces. Some of them who don't have the power, but all vehicles supposed to be licensed have a number plate before it is the road. So that's a violation of the Road Transport Act? Yeah, if you don't have a plate, it's a violation. All right, let's move on. You are listening to Ask the Expert with me, James Tambalebi. We are looking at the topic road traffic safety, and my expert is Mr. Lamin Koroma, a consultant and trainer with the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority. Let's move on. Ensuring road safety. What do you do to ensure road safety? To ensure road safety, we've been training our staff, training drivers, 
educating the public. We, every week we used to have a program on the, at SLBC TV just to educate people. Go to the parks, lorry parks, to educate people. And the training, in fact, all our VEs are trained. The road cops are trained. And they know exactly what they look. There is a document to prepare which they call prohibition notice. Prohibition notice when the vehicle examiner goes on the road, see that vehicle, I put over 20 components there you should look at. Anyone that fall foul of the, the law, some are automatic prohibition, like one tire, the screen is not good, the door is not working, all this one, emission, the smoke coming out of a vehicle, you have about four different types. And there are two you should not allow on the road. That vehicle should be off the road. Because these are all the things we put in place. We try to educate people. If your vehicle is emitting cloudy blue smoke, that vehicle, the engine is almost gone. And that pollution it's producing affects the public. And these are some of the things. White cloudy smoke, the water and oil are mixing. So this one also is harmful to us, the road users. If your tires, they are below 1.6 millimeter, that tire can explode if there is it. All those things we had there, our personnel have been trained to look at those. Sometimes they say, oh, they just hold me no more. I don't know what. But you also can look at your vehicle. Look at it. If the vehicle is standing, you look at it yourself. That will help you to minimize or eliminate some of the potential accidents. Okay, let's talk about safety rules. What are the different safety rules for road users and for pedestrians and motorists as well? We would take for pedestrians. Walk against the vehicle. Don't walk behind the vehicle in front of the vehicle. If the vehicle is chasing, coming towards you, you walk against that. So you can see you, he can see you. You can see the vehicle, then the vehicle can see you. The driver will be able to see you. But if you walk, when the vehicle is moving forward, you are just walking the same direction of the vehicle, anything can happen. The other bit, the zebra crossing, or you want to cross, any road, whether it's zebra or not, you have to look left, you look right. Look again, and while crossing, you keep looking till you cross when you see the road is clear. Three, don't go to a vehicle that is overcrowded. This one is for your own safety. When that vehicle is overcrowded, don't enter that vehicle. When the vehicle is overloaded, like the ones running up the province, you don't control that vehicle. The driver don't control the vehicle. In the center of gravity of that load, the center of gravity of the vehicle will be altered. The load will be controlling it. So when you press that brake, the force, as we say in physics, <laughs> that one will come. You will not be able to stop the vehicle. So that one, speed, control your speed. The speed, don't kill people, kill your speed instead of killing yourself. That's just a normal saying when actually we are training. And know exactly when your vehicle, every week service period, you should know when that vehicle due to be service. There is a procedure. If you service it today, put a small sticker somewhere. Then when it reach the mileage, you do the service. Anything unusual you saw coming behind or noise, check. We have free checks here. If you hear a noise on the wheel, come, let's look. So, so what's the prescribed mileage for servicing a vehicle routine? Depending on the age of the vehicle. If, if it's an old vehicle, I will say the prescribed mileage, you should not do more than 2,000 kilometers. It has to be serviced. But service again depends on the quality of the oil. The oil they are using here is substandard. We, get, we have what to call SAE, Society of Automotive Engineer, the grade of oil. If you look on the gallon of the oil, you will see they put 5 stroke 40W, 10 stroke 50W. Newer cars, they recommend use 5 stroke 40 or 50. 
defining the viscosity, how thick that oil is. So if you have an older car, that first number should always be high, should be 10 or 15. So the viscosity, the thickness is in a common word, the thickness of the oil, because our temperature is high, it will preserve the parts because they are moving parts and lubricate them. But when you put a thinner oil or substandard oil, when the place is hot, you have metal to metal grinding. That's why you see most cars don't last long. The viscosity of the oil. Then another thing you have to look, the air filter. The air filter is like the hair you have in your nose. When you are servicing, if at all, that air filter, you don't change it. You don't change the oil filter. First and foremost, if you don't change the oil filter, it's like going to the bag. You have a bag, you rub soap without using water. You come out, you wipe your body. You've no bad. The same to what the garages are doing. They change the oil, they don't change the oil filter because of the money. They keep the money. The next one, they will not change the fuel filter. Fuel filter has to be changed every two service. If you don't change the fuel filter every two service, you get your car start to do hunting or jacking. You see the motor car pull. And because the filter don't block. The most important one, the air filter. The air filter is like the air we have in our nose. If you scrape the air inside your nose, all the muck goes down your stomach. The same to the engine. The engine is burning 14.7, the ratio of fuel. 14.7 part of fuel, one drop of air. That's what all engines run. Diesel, 15 to 1. Petrol, 14 to 1. That means 14 part of air, one drop of fuel. That's what runs the vehicle well. Then if you look at the vehicle at the back, you see light droplets of water. Tells you the air fuel ratio is okay. So whenever you take your vehicle for service, make sure ask, have you changed the air filter? Have you changed the oil filter? Have you changed the fuel filter? They should show you. Then look at the oil. If it Because most of our cars we call new, they are old cars. As soon as it passes 50,000 kilometers, it's, it's an old car. Don't use low viscosity oil. Make sure you use high viscosity, like 10 stroke 50. Look the gallon. But when you go to Gold Street, they don't know that. I've been there, ask them, say, it's a dinner good oil. What in the number I mean? They will not be able to tell you. You see, these are the things that is actually damaging our vehicles. The same to tires. So many things you look on your tire. You should know where the pressure, what pressure you put on your tire. Go out, ask most drivers, say, how much breeze they put on your tire? He will not be able to tell you. Maybe after 10 or 20, they will tell you one that. So what's the prescribed air quantity in a tire? In a tire, when you have your car, look the driver's door. Just open it. You have what is called the B post. The side of the door, where the door closes, there is a, 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 a paste paper there, white one, that tells you what pressure goes on the front, what pressure goes on the back. But most people don't know. If you don't see there, open your fuel filter, your petrol filter, it is there. But ask some, just pump the tire, kick, kick the tire, it's in a stone pump. You go out. And when the tire is overinflated, that way pump and too much, you should know, look at the front, the middle of the tire will be wearing. That tells you we are putting too much air. If you look at the tire, it's eating on the edge. Tells you you are underinflating it. That means the tire was not properly inflated. You have, if you stone pump, you don't put proper air, it do what is called wobbling. The steering will be shaking, especially when you are going at the point. You should know all those things before actually you use your vehicle. Do all your checks before you move. Especially if you're going to, you are going to McKinney now, from here or going to Bo, you leave here at four. What time will you leave arriving there? At night. Before you are going, do your normal checks. Check the tire, check the fluid, check the oil. Most important, the lights. Because the place will be dark before you reach there. Everything should be working. And on no account you get any white light behind your vehicle. Only when you reverse. If you are driving, there is a white light behind your vehicle. It's a bookable offense. 
when you step on your brake, they should illuminate. That illumination should be there. On no account you should be driving on your dashboard, you saw a blue light on the dashboard. If the blue light is there, the main beam is on, the next driver will not see. It tells you the main beam, turn it off. All drivers should know that. Those are some of the precautions you do for safety on the road. Very good. So let's move on now to major causes or causes of road accidents. What are those causes? One of the major causes, the most potential one, is light. Two, overtaking. Three, overloading. I will take them one at a time. Take light. As I said, blue light on your dashboard tells you your main beam is on. The next man coming will not see. Straight away, you are going at a speed. Two, the next one, overtaking. When you overtake, once you overtook that vehicle, you have to go at least 50 to 100 meters before you come inside. You don't just overtake and come. And when you look the road, the road marking, there are some chain mark, they cut them. Once you see that, that's the area you should overtake. If it's a solid line on the road, you should not overtake. But drivers overtake any side. You can only overtake where did you see that cut lines at the middle of the road. That's the time you are allowed to overtake. And the next one, you look at your tires. Tires should be inflated correctly before your journey. If they say you should be using at least in 45 PSI pounds per square inch, the pressure or bars or a metric weight, don't put 45 if the place is warm. But on a hot day, don't put 45 like much. Put at least 43. Because once you are going, the tire becomes hot. The next thing, the pressure go up as signs. The pressure will come up. Then if you put the correct pressure, once it is hot, then the pressure come up. You get problem. Then you overinflate it, the tire will be eating at the middle. And the lines on the tire, they are there for three purposes. The design is on the tire. One, to clear the sand on the road, minimize accident. Two, to make sure it cools the tire. Three, to make sure the tires grip between the tire and the tire. So when you brake, you have that traction control. Friction will be there. That's what we call mu, which is coefficient of friction, will be there. So these are the things. Speed is the most killer again. Use speed, you can control, not speed. Don't kill yourself, kill the speed. Because the more you run that vehicle fast, overloading, you are not in control. The law is you don't put goods and passenger, in, goods and passenger in the same truck. It's illegal. It's out of it because the load is mostly what kills people there when there is an accident. And make sure you control your speed. Speed. These are the essential thing that is causing it. And alcohol. Make sure you are in that sound mind of driving. So many things can cause accident. Not only this. Not only what we are seeing. So we have to make sure all those are there. No intoxication, no drunkenness, and make sure you are in sound mind. If you are not feeling well, you will sit behind that scary. So perhaps, finally, what's the impact of road safety on individuals, on communities, and on all road users? The impact of road safety actually has more or less educate people has reduced the rate of accident we used to have. Still is high, but most people, you use the word compliant. If they comply to what SLRS is saying to them for road safety, will reduce accident and reduce the rate of death. And when you look at the Okadas, when they were here about four or five years ago, every day the accident is high. But now they are coming here, they've been trained, we're supposed to train them, and they've been trained, and we're educating them. We show them the road signs and show them whatever they are not supposed to do. The impact is actually save life. We've actually saved life and save the community and make sure the country is healthy to use the vehicles. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Lamin Kuruma. Thank you also. You've been listening to the program Ask the Expert with me, James Tambalebi. The topic for discussion was road traffic safety, and my expert was Mr. Lamin Kuruma, a former consultant and trainer with the Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority. Keep listening. Tune into Radio Mount Oral FM 107.3 every Monday after the 8 p.m. News Bulletin and on Saturdays after the 7 a.m. News Bulletin for Ask the Expert. Yeah.